Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. I know it's kind of chilly in here. Probably a little bit colder in here than it is outside, but the scripture said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Is anyone glad on tonight to be in the house of the Lord? There was a shooting over in France, but I made it to work. I left work and I made it here. So is anybody really glad that nothing happened on your job today? Oh, can we stand to our feet now and give God a hand clap of praise for keeping us on today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, thank you for keeping us. There's a family right now praying, crying because they lost their family member, but we are still here. So before I pray, can we just surround this sanctuary with the fruit of our lips and just begin to worship the Lord in this place? Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. God, we bless your name. We magnify your name. Before we pray corporately, let's just love on the Lord. Let us just use our lips to bless him. Let's use our lips to worship him. Let's use our lips to show him how much we adore him, how much we magnify him. Come on, lift up your worship. Lift up your worship. There should be a song in your heart. Hallelujah. God, we bless your name. Thank you for being a great God. Thank you for being a mighty God. Thank you for being a strong God. Thank you for being Elohim. Thank you for being Jehovah Rapha. Thank you for being Jehovah Nisi. God, we thank you for being our God. We thank you for being the great I am. In the times of trouble, we can depend on you. So right now, we bless your name. We magnify your name. We lift you up. You said, if you be lifted, you shall draw all men unto you. So we right now just lift up your name. We just lift up who you are. We lift up you because you're a healer. We lift up you because you're a provider. We lift up you because you are our banner. We lift you up because you are the most high God. We don't ask for anything. We just will bless Your name, your name alone is wonderful. Your name alone is mighty. Your name alone is powerful. So thank you for having a wonderful name we can call on. Thank you for having a wonderful name. But in time of trouble, it can bring peace to our situation. Thank you for having a name we can depend on for protection. Oh God, we bless you, God. We adore you, God. We love you, God. We love you, God. You've shown grace to us, God. You've been merciful, God. You have blotted out our transgression, God. We worship you in this place. Hallelujah, God. We worship you in this place, God. Come on, come on, open up your mouth and worship him. Let's set the atmosphere for miracles on tonight. Let's set the atmosphere for miracles on tonight. Hallelujah, God. And as Peter spoke to her in the scripture on today, he spoke and said, get up, God. So we, God, we say as we speak on tonight, hear our prayer, God, and move on our behalf, God. Oh, God, I say hear our prayer on tonight, God, and move on our behalf, God. Let the people see you work through us, God. It was the miracles that they said, I want to be saved. So I pray for miracles on tonight, God, so that souls will be saved. I pray for miracles on tonight, God, so that bodies will be healed. I pray for miracles on tonight, God, so that your name will be magnified in this place. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Oh, God, we worship you. Yes, God. Oh, God, we can't tell you enough that we love you, God. We can't tell you enough that you are wonderful, God. We can't tell you enough that you are mighty, God. We thank you for being God. And God, I say, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God, you said, then these signs shall follow them who believe, God. So God, we're going to open up our eyes tonight. We're going to believe you and we're going to push. We're going to pray until something specific happens on tonight. We are believing you for miracles on tonight. Can somebody shout miracles? Miracles. Come on, somebody shout miracles. miracles. Now if you believe it, open up your mouth, clap your hands and give God praise for what's about to happen in this sanctuary. Hallelujah. 
Come on, come on, come on, open up your mouth and bless him. Miracles are going to happen on tonight. We thank God for being here on tonight. Come on and put your hands together. We come into this house to lift our hands and praise and worship the Lord on tonight. We come to lift our hands and give him glory. We come to lift our hands and give him praise. Everybody say, we come to lift our hands and give him glory. We come to lift our hands and give him praise. Give him glory. Give him glory. We come to lift our hands and give him praise. Come to lift our hands and give him glory. We come to lift our hands and give him praise. Everybody sing. We come to lift our hands and give him glory. We come to lift our hands and give him praise. Give him glory. Give him glory. We come to lift our hands and give him praise. We come to clap our hands and give him praise. Come on and sing. We come to clap our hands and shake up Judah. We come to clap our hands and give him praise. Give him glory. Give him glory. We come to lift our hands and give him praise. Give him glory. We come to clap give our hands. Give him glory. We come to clap our hands and give him praise. Do our dance and magnify it. We come to do our dance and magnify it. We come to do our dance and magnify him. We come to do our dance and give him praise. Everybody say, We come to do our dance and magnify him. We come to do our dance and give him praise. Come on, help me. We come to do our dance and magnify him. We come to do our dance and give him praise. Oh, give him glory. Give him glory. Give him glory. We come to do our dance and give him praise. Give him glory. Give him glory. We come to lift our hands. We come. Come and clap our hands. We come to dance. We come to do our dance. We come to lift our hands. We come and lift our hands. We come and clap our hands. We come to do our dance. We come to do our dance. We come to lift our hands. We come to clap our hands. We come to do our dance and give him praise. We take it from the top. We come to lift our hands and give him glory. We come to lift our hands and give him praise. Everybody, we come to lift our hands and give him glory. We come to lift our hands and give him praise. Give him glory. We come to clap our hands and give him praise. Everybody clap. We come to clap our hands and send up Judah. We come to clap our hands and give him praise. Give him glory. Give him glory. We come to clap our hands and give him praise. Give him glory. Give him glory. We come to lift our hands. We come to clap our hands.
So when we come into your presence, we humble ourselves before you, God. The song says, when I come into your presence, I humble myself, lift up both my hands, and I begin to worship you. I'll worship you. Come on, help me sing it. When I come into your presence, I humble myself. I lift up both my hands and I begin to worship you. I worship you, Lord. say that. When I come into your presence, I humble myself. And Lord, I lift up both my hands. Lift up both my and hands. I'll begin to worship you, Lord, for who you are. I begin I'll worship you, Lord. Worship I will worship you, Lord.
Because you're God. And because. Just because. Just because. And because. I will praise your name. Just because. Remember what you've done for me. And because. Just because you're God. Just because. I will worship you, Lord. And because. Just because you're God. Worship, it gets hotter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Come on and bless the Lord in this place. Can you give the Lord a frosty praise? Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let me first start by apologizing for not having this sanctuary in, um, in a more comfortable position. Um, I apologize that we, we, we dropped the ball on that. And uh, I promise you that after service, I'll have a couple of conversations and uh, we'll see if we can do better next time. The blessing of the Lord be upon you. How many are glad to be in the house of the Lord? Thank you, Jesus. I'm excited for what God is doing. I'm excited for uh, the presence of the living God. I'm still floating off Sunday. I don't know about you. I, let me just tell you something. If you will make it your business to be in the house of the Lord on Sunday and come with that same mind that we're going to just pray through and wait for the Lord, um, I will tell you God will do what he's going to do. And I promise you that um, we will not alter the plan of God. You, you know me by now. I'll preach during the offering, the announcements. I don't care where we go. Amen. When it, wherever it hit, that's where we're going. Amen. And then we go home. But have you noticed when the Lord gets, you know, we don't have to wait. We, this ain't the waiting ministry. We, whenever the Lord showed up, that's where we're going. And then we're going home. Praise Jesus. Um, I'm ready to tell somebody to go get my coat and my gloves. I really, really apologize. Listen, I don't need y'all getting sick, so keep your coats on. Throw your scarves around your neck. Don't be trying to get cute now. Amen. I want you. I do not want y'all to get sick. And brothers, if you're bald-headed, that's right, just go ahead. It's all right. I give you a dispensation to put your caps on tonight. No, I don't want, you, I don't want nobody getting sick. I'm serious. You, you don't. Your wife would do that, wouldn't she? Just, just embarrass you like that. Honey, put up, cause look, them, you, you don't live here. You got to go home. And they ain't got to take care of you. And you got to go to work. Sniffles and everything. Yeah, you sitting up there trying to be all ordained and all cute and all holy. You better put that hat on. No, cause see, that's just real talk, y'all. Don't get so deep in church that you can't be real. Amen? Here we go. Um, Tonight is the first installation of our prayer clinic. And let me just share with you what, what, what I mean by that. We're just going to take some time to look at prayer from both, um, a, it's always biblical, but really from a conversational or theoretical approach. And then we're going to practice what we learn. And we're going to do it in some guidelines. They're going to make some of you feel like, wow, okay, this is different. And it is different. And in, in, I'm not here for you to have the same thing that you've always been used to. So it, as a leader, you, all, you introduce. That's, that's how you learn, and you're willing to grow. So um, I'm going to say some things when we get to the uh, practicing of prayer that um, some of you may, um, and I hope nobody takes offense to anything because my heart's in the right place. But it's just the fact that there's a whole lot of people that don't know how to pray. No, they've, they've heard prayer, but they just don't know how to pray. And they're in good company. You know, let me tell you why. Um, they're in good company. Hold on for a second. Justin, why don't you just read that? We're setting up prayer stations. So just, to, just he's doing some stuff that I asked him to do, but do it from the inside. Um, we're in good company. Ask me, like who? Come on, like who? The disciples. They were sitting there watching Jesus pray, and they said, hey, teach us to pray like you do that. And, and guess what? When they asked him, he then said, when ye pray, pray our Father. Right? He gives them what we call the Lord's Prayer. But he gives to his disciples a model prayer. And uh, how many of you were in Sunday school on Sunday, so I don't have to go through this? Okay, how many of you weren't? Raise your hands. Yeah. That's all I'm going to do. Okay. 
Sunday school was about the Lord, at least our subject, it wasn't the Lord's Prayer. And so it is a model prayer, and watch this. It is a prayer of intercession, it's a prayer of petition, it's a prayer of provision, it's a, it's a, a loosing and binding prayer, it's a prayer of forgiveness, because this prayer was not designed necessarily to just be, it, it was designed as a model so that it was all-encompassing. So you could use the Lord's Prayer as a prayer. And then you could use the Lord's Prayer as an introduction. And then you could lose, use the Lord's Prayer to pray, watch this, pray one line, our Father, and stay there. And just begin to keep talking about the attributes of the fatherhood of God. Our Father who comforts us. Our Father who loves us. Our Father who holds us in his hands. Our Father, you just, who art in heaven. Yeah, that's a whole nother 30 minutes, Right? Hallowed be thy name. Oh, God. Sacred is thy name. And then you start calling the names of God. El, Elohim, El Shaddai, Adonai. Sacred is thy name. Jehovah. And then you go through the whole list, right? Thy kingdom come. Now you start praying for the kingdom of God to come upon the earth. And so that's, that's a whole line that you can pray into. Thy kingdom come. So Lord, send your kingdom. Send your kingdom in this perverse and crooked generation. Send your kingdom in America that is absolutely in need of you. Send your kingdom, the kingdom that is established by your will and by your word, right? Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. How about that one? Come on, y'all, just talk to me. How about that one? Thy will be done. So now it's thy will be done in me. Thy will be done in us. The will, and, and, and my prayer is the, uh, that the will of the word be found in my will. The will of the word be found. Thy will be done. I need, I need your will because I got my own will. And I fight with my will every day. So thy will be done. Come on, it's the same prayer Jesus prayed in Gethsemane, right? When he says, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. He says, nevertheless, not my, come on, will, but so a lot of times when we pray, we have to ask God for his will. The will of his word be done in us, right? Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So what this is basically saying is we want, Jesus is saying to the disciples, so when you pray, ask God to establish the kingdom of God in the earth. And let what happens, let the earth be a reflection of what's happening in heaven. Right? Thy will be, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. Whoop, there you go. There's another comma. And you, you're done. Give us this day. Now all of a sudden we're talking about today, not tomorrow. Come on here. Because transition, if you're going to do transition, if you're going to great, then your transition has got to be, listen to me, today. It's not tomorrow. The Bible says take no thought of tomorrow for tomorrow take care of itself. Sufficient to the day is the evil thereof. Is that the Bible? So so basically we miss out on what God wants to do in us because we are already in the next week. You're already thinking about tomorrow and it's just today. Lord, just get me through today. I've got to transition today. I've got to do something different today than I did yesterday. In my thinking, in my behavior, come on here. And my, so that you're never going to get to change until you master transition. Right? So you have to intentionally do something different today than you did yesterday. I was at the hospital visiting Mother Fenner. And uh, yesterday I was there and I was on the second floor of the, the second level of the parking garage. And so I took the stairs because it was just one level. Today I was on the fourth level. But my commitment was take the stairs because now you're going to do two levels more than you did yesterday. So if I have at the end of the day, I can say, well, at least I did something different. You get what I'm saying? I tra- I'm transitioning. Even in the workout, when, 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 when I'm done working out and doing the whole wind down thing and it's a lower speed than the first one, I take the incline up. Why? Because you've got to keep pushing yourself. The problem with the church right now is this, it's just absolutely too comfortable, and listen to me, and too weak. It would be different if you were comfortable and powerful. You know, we casting out demons. You know what I'm saying? We're laying hands on the sick, raising the dead. That would be something different if we was comfortable and powerful. But we're comfortable and weak. Now, don't, don't get offended. I ain't weak. I'm talking about the church collective. The church is weak. 
And so the, the way the church becomes strong is through the stuff that we've been reading in the faith focus, particularly yesterday when the text says, and this kind comes out only by much prayer and fasting. And depending on, on your version, prayer and fasting, right? Prayer and fasting have to be the tools that you use as a believer to be victorious in your life. Yes? Let me give you some context because I don't know how you heard it over the years. But Jesus says this kind. What kind? What kind? Yeah, I know this kind, but what, what this kind is this kind? What was he talking about? This kind. Notice he, say, he uses these words. Before I can get to your other piece, this kind. What is he talking about? He's, not, he's talking about demonic what? Spirits, but, but he's, he's talking about a specific. He's talking about a lunatic. That's, that's the category. But he says this kind. Who said that? Yes, possession. That's what he's talking about. Because there was already demonic influence. There was demonic manipulation. And notice it was the same, it was the same issue. So he runs into various different, ver he runs into variations of demonic presentation. But he says to his disciples when they said, how come we couldn't cast him out? He says, because this kind. He's not going to respond to your normal, he riding on a Honda. He ain't doing that. He, you know, he, yeah, and behold, all that, all that theater we do. No, no, no. He ain't responding to that. And can I tell you something to you? And I'm so serious about this. And I, I try to present teaching in a way that you can get it. So I make it sort of humorous, but I'm so serious. Do you know that there's a devil assigned to your life that is not going to respect the fact that you go to church? There's a demon out to destroy you. No, come on. Though. I want to tell you, with you. Watch this. There's a demon with your name on it. And if you, are not, if you are not consistently fasting and praying, you will fall prey to the work of the enemy. Prayer is the only thing that's going to keep you strong and keep you anchored in the word of God. So Jesus says this kind, what kind? This demon-possessed kind only comes out by, the one version says, by a reservoir of fasting and praying. Meaning you have to have stuff built up. The old saints call, talked about sending up the timber, praying consistently. And can I say this to you? If you develop a healthy prayer life, you will walk into change. You won't even know that you've changed. And so then when things happen in your life, you're not spooked by the enemy. Come on, somebody. When, I'm try, when you pray, you, th then the enemy doesn't take you by surprise. The Holy Ghost will tell you. Okay, bear, <laughs> brace yourself because here it come. Anybody besides me, the Holy Ghost, it, your spidey sense is working? Come on, right? Th that the Holy Ghost will speak in your spirit. And then watch this. He won't let you be afraid of the enemy. How is it that you're a believer and you're scared of the devil? When greater is he that is in, come on, in you, than he that is... Come on, y'all. We're going to get there. Um, so tonight, we're going we're gonna to do uh, part one. Let's uh, pass these out. Get a little help on the other side. Oh, you're good. You're good? I'm, just, I'm giving you a handout. Um, and uh, trying to think. If you need more of these... Uh, email info at gc <laughs> cogic don't tell sister Bridget that I told you to do it <laughs> info at gc cogic dot com and we will send uh, them to you uh, it, it's just important I want people to have information I want you to grow in the things of God so we're going to give you uh, the handout for the first edition of the prayer clinic we're going to have other um, elders help us with uh, some of these. And so tonight, um, because our faith focus is in Acts chapter 9, verse 40, let me read that. I'm going to read it out of the Amplified Version, and then I'm going to break this out, and then we'll go, uh, we'll move forward. Verse 40 in the Amplified Version, Acts 9 and 40. But Peter put them all out of the room and knelt down and what? Prayed. Then turning to the body, he said, Tabitha, get up. And she opened her eyes. 
And when she saw Peter, she raised herself and sat upright. Peter looked at the body and said, Tabitha, do what? Come on, all, get up. Notice, what, look, look at the whole piece. He knelt down and what did he do? He prayed. Come on, y'all. What did he do? Do y'all have Bibles? Acts chapter 9, verse 40. But Peter put them all out of the room and knelt down and did what? Then turning to the body, he what? Okay, watch. Oh, that's why I don't want you to miss this. He knelt down and did what? Prayed. Then turning to the body, he... he what, I'm sorry, what y'all saying? Yeah, y- y'all missed it. He knelt down and did what? Prayed. Then he turned to the body and stopped. That's where I want you to stop at, said. I'm trying to lift up two words. He prayed and he... This is important. Because what we've learned to do is we've learned to pray, but we don't know how to say. See, we think that praying is saying. And praying is a, the sincere communication of the soul in communication with God. But then we have to say something after we pray. See, because we pray to God, and then we say to a thing. I, I got Bible for you. Want to hear it? Jesus goes away, and he does what? He prays, right? Then he comes back, and then he says to uh, Philip, He says, you feed them. He says, even if we had 200 penny worth, we couldn't feed everybody and they get a bite. But he knew what he was going to do. So the little boy comes with the lunch. And then he does what? He receives it. He blesses it. He breaks it. And then he shares it. One thing you have to understand, if you're going to pray, then you're going to pray God's word. You're not going to pray your situation. See, we, we pray, we bring to God the situation. He already knows that. God already knows what you have need of before you ask him. So, you know, people get a little ruffled when I teach this, but I teach it this way. You don't need to go to God and tell him your needs. Because the real issue is you live a needless life. I got Bible for it. But my God shall supply all your need, not S. Need. It's the category. Needs, plural, would suggest that there are individual things that you need and God's going to keep supplying those. No, he's already taken care of the need. So that in, when your needs show up, it's under the category of need and God has already done that. So when we pray, we talk to God and we ought to be praying his word back to him. Father, we thank you that your word has declared that all my need is supplied. And I thank you today that you supplied all my need. The need for the need for finance, the need for restoration of my mind, the need for fellowship, the need for food, for the need for provision, whatever it is. I thank you that that's already supplied. And then when I get up, then I begin to speak to things. There was a prayer request that came um, from part of the country this morning about a young lady by the name, I think her name was Camille, if I, if I phrase that name right, Camille, who needs um, medical supplies. She needs a, 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 a medical, a, a hospital bed, an air mattress, and a lift, whatever that, that lift thing is. And so we prayed, believing God's for his provision, and then we spoke that God is going to touch somebody that, uh, that had, that's in that industry to bless that woman. Where do we get the saying from? Come on, y'all, quickly, because i got to break you up. Quickly, where do we get the saying from? It's, in the, <laughs> it's the word of God, but give me a quote, quote a scripture. Where? Mark 11, I'm, Mark 11, Mark 11, 22 and through 24. If you're taking notes, it's important that you get this. Notice Jesus says that this, when, uh, this is about the cursing of the fig tree, right? Jesus says, whosoever shall what? Say. Come on, y'all. Whosoever shall what? Say unto what? 
this mountain. So now he's got us speaking to mountains. Be thou removed. No, he didn't say pray to the mountain. He didn't say pray about the mountain. He says speak to it. Notice the life of Jesus. He's speaking to everything that he's commanding. Oh God. So he speaks to a devil and he says in Mark chapter 9 with the lunatic son, he tells that demon, he says, come out of him. Right? So there are some things that you're going to pray about, which is going to be the word of God. And then you're going to speak to things. Come on, say with me. I'm going to pray to God and I'm going to speak to things. That's why you can look at your neighbor and say, loose here. (laughs) You see what I'm saying? I'm going to pray to God. But I'm going to speak to things because prayer, watch this, prayer creates a cause and an effect. Man, I want to teach this. A, a cause and effect. So when we pray, we cause things to happen. Hallelujah. Well, one of our mothers in, in morning prayer uh, this week spoke about um, what God did over a period of time that she was praying and praying and believing God. And the more she prayed, and it went into a couple of years, but watch this, she said, and the Lord, the Lord delivered. The Lord turned that thing around. The Lord gave her what she asked for. Why? Because she kept praying, listen to me, she kept praying, and in her prayer, she was causing that situation to turn around. That's why you can't stop praying. Because what you're doing is you're causing the thing to align itself to the will and word of God. And when you start, the best thing the enemy can do is to get you to stop praying. He will frustrate you so much that you'll stop praying. He'll get on your nerves. He'll anoint somebody to get on your nerves. He will distract you so you will stop praying. And your conversation is filled with what's going on instead of what God is doing. That's why this transition is about moving forward, staying focused, and what? Avoiding distractions. Come on, y'all got to open your mouths tonight about avoiding distractions. Because notice in verse 40, but Peter put them what? He put them all out. Why? They were distractions. And then if you look further up in the text, and I'm going to keep jumping around Acts chapter 9. Verse 39, when they found out, now Peter had just healed a guy who was bedridden for eight years. When they saw him healed, the whole city came to the Lord. Then when they heard that Peter was, they heard in Joppa that Peter was in Lydda, they went and said, hey, come because um, Dorcas or Tabitha has died and she was a valuable citizen of our community. And notice what the text says. Well, I'm just telling you what the Amplified text says. So Peter immediately rose and accompanied them. Moved forward. He stayed focused because he knew that if she was dead, he was going to raise her up. But where did he get it from? Come on, y'all talk to me. Where did Peter get that from? When did Jesus do it? He saw Lazarus. Peter was there when Jesus raised up Lazarus. Why did Jesus raise up the man that was on his bed for eight years? Where did he get that from? Jesus. Where did you see Jesus do that? John chapter 5 at the pool of Bethesda. Jesus walks up on a guy and he's been there 38 years. And watch what he's thinking. Come on, y'all get this. He's thinking that I got to wait until the angel comes down to trouble the water. Because the history, oh God, I want to run on this one. The history has been that there's a cause and an effect. The angel causes the water to stir, and the effect is whoever gets in first comes out healed. Jesus steps up and says, no, I'm the cause and the effect. Oh. Hallelujah. Jesus says, no, 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 you're not waiting for any more angels. Do you want to be healed today? Oh, oh God. And when he has to let go of everything he saw so that he could stay focused to believe, and that's when he got his miracle. Some of us have been praying historically like we've heard other people pray. Now listen, you ain't no different because that's how I learned how to pray in church too. I got right next to uh, Elder Uri's Chillis. I listened for years to Bishop McCoy pray. And so you, you're going to hear people that are dominant and influential in your life pray. And you're going to pick up the spirit of prayer as it was upon them. But here's the thing, you got to cultivate the spirit of prayer. Praying is not just talking. You, there's a spirit of prayer. And, I, and, I, and I, I'm saying it in a very cultural way because I don't even know how to explain it. I don't know how to explain the spirit of prayer. Because I, 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 I grew up and I kept hearing the saints say it. 
Oh, boy, he got a spirit of prayer on him. I didn't know what that meant. But you know what it meant? That the Lord had anointed that particular person to be in his face. And fluently, they would talk to God. And they would, lay, they would use all of the tools. They didn't need prayer clinics because they were in the face of God. They were in that Bible and they understood. But th- this generation, we need, we need all the help we can get. Because you know why? We don't know the word. And it's hard for you to pray when you don't know the word. That's why, let me tell you something, it's almost laughable when, you, when people talk about, well, I'm praying for you. Some people will tell me that, I just say, thank you. I'm like, you, you don't go to Sunday school. I ain't never seen you in a prayer meeting. And you're going to pray for me? You, you don't even know what's going on with me. You didn't even ask. And then you don't have any word in you. So when you go to pray, what you going to say? It's going to be a little tight, but you're going to be all right. When you go to God to pray, what are you going to say? Because if you're only going to tell God that I need help, he already knows that. If you're only going to God to tell him I'm in trouble, he knows that. So what are you going to say to God that's going to help me out of my situation? Oh, God. That's a whole other thing. I better let that go. All right. So don't be intimidated to pray or intimidated by others' prayers. Prayer is the official language of the kingdom of God. Say with me, prayer Prayer. is the official language of the kingdom of God. Now let me tell you what I mean by that. Do you know that, what's the official language of the United States? So when you, with your English speaking self, if you don't speak multiple languages, if you go someplace else, the first thing you're going to ask them is what? Do you speak English? Why is that, why is that a critical question? You can understand what they're saying. Well, if prayer is the only language that God knows, then you're going talking a language that he doesn't know because God doesn't hear the language of fear. And, and I'm sorry, you know, and I know, I know all the romantic stuff we say in church, but this is clinic, so I'm going to help you with it, that God is not moved by your emotion. Well, he cares because I'm crying. No, that's the romantic sense of you that believes that. And that's okay, but I'm trying to tell you it's faith that moves God. And prayer, God watches over his what? To do what? To perform it. So if he watches over his word to perform it, then it says then I've got to pray his word to him for him to do something. So maybe God hasn't moved in your situation because you haven't given him his word about that situation. Your feelings, your frustrations, your anger. Ooh, you know, I'm so mad, I got to go pray. What? You ain't praying mad. Because God's not listening to that. Prayer is not some sedative to calm you down. Prayer is the official language of the kingdom of God. And I'm going to get ahead of myself on Sunday, but let me just throw this out just in case I don't see you. And when you don't pray, When you don't pray, if you're a citizen of the kingdom of God and you do not pray, then you are, you are, you should be tried for treason in the kingdom. Because God can't hear you. You lock God's hands because you don't pray. See, prayer, and guess what? The prayer meeting is the, is the, is the one place that we can't get anybody to come to. If we're going to eat, everybody's showing up. If we're going to have a, a, a musical or we're going to have fun, we're going to do something social, everybody's going to bust the door down. But tell them we're going to shut up and pray for three days. Shut in, I should say. We need to shut in and shut up. But we're going to shut in for three days and just pray. And watch this. I don't have time for it. I got something else to do. The most critical part of your life is your prayer life. Because it is that thing that moves God. So, prayer is the official language. The third little bullet, prayer can be frustrating if we don't understand God's word and his ways. Right? So, six types of prayers. Got this from Apostle Frederick Casey Price book, Answer Prayer Guarantee. The first one is the prayer of agreement. Okay? What we're going to do in, this, in these, these, these months or, I mean, these weeks of um, push is that we're going to be teaching on these six 
prayers. Now, now you can give me, I can give you a list of 50 prayers, but it doesn't make sense to give you a list of 50 and we don't know six. So can we just agree that we're going to just master six? And then we'll work on 50. We'll do seven after we get six. Because I, pr- I promise you, if you get six down, you won't need seven. Right? Prayer of agreement. Matthew chapter 18, verse 19. Somebody got your Bible? Come on. I need some people to get these scriptures before I get to them. Okay? Flip, flip, flip. Matthew chapter 18, verse 19. Read. Uh-huh. They shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. So the prayer of agreement is two people touching, agreeing on earth, asking anything. So literally, if there's somebody next to you, You could, now watch this, just agree on what the word says and what you want. That's what it says. All those other conditions come from you. Y'all ain't ready for it. The prayer of faith, Mark 11, 24. Somebody raise your hands. Hold on. Okay, good. Whatsoever things you ask when you pray, believe that you have received them and you shall have them. So if you don't have them, it's just logically discussing that what? You may not have believed. Come on, y'all. Will y'all talk to me? Because here's, here's, here's what I'm not doing. I'm not going to give you gravy. I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. I'm not going to make you feel comfortable. Here's the point. Either you believe God's word is God's word or you don't. Now, and here's why I'm at. Either God's word has got to work or let's go get something else. But we got to stop explaining away why God's work is, why God's word is not working in our life as though the Bible is broke. This broke, this thing, but this thing ain't working. No, ain't nothing wrong with that book. We're not working. And Regina, that's the problem. We don't want to have that honest discussion. I've been saved 20 years, 40 years, 10 years, 5 years. Well, that's great. But do you pray like you were saved day one? Or have you become so comfortable with your life and the fact that you're smart and you, everybody know you and you got a hookup and you can do this, that you don't need God? And that's where the church is going. Because we got all these options. So God is just, you know, he's an accessory. He's not necessary. So there's the prayer of there's the prayer of agreement that I can touch and agree. There's the prayer of faith. No, no, I'm going to get to this agreement thing. This ain't the prayer of hope. Mother Thomason, let, let's touch in let's touch in hope that this thing work. If you don't believe it, then please don't take my hands. See, here's the here's the issue now. Because now we have to be politically correct, Tony, in praying for folks. Because if they come for prayer, you know, well, we got to pray for them because they ask. Well, what do you believe? Well, I just, I hope the Lord's going to, then you go back and sit down. And see, that's the real, we don't want to do that. Because then all of a sudden we ain't friendly. Go and sit down until you get, until you make up your mind that you really believe that. What do you want the Lord? I just want the Lord to bless me. How? Bishop McCoy used to say, blessed is the man who expecteth nothing, for he shall never be disappointed. (laughs) You can't come to God, hey, and and guess what? Our songs mess us up. Any way you bless me, I'll be satisfied. What? That is totally against the word. But it's a great song. Now listen, I love the, any way you bless me, I'll be satisfied. We go in. But I'm saying it's not biblically aligned to the specifics of prayer. Because he says, whatsoever things ye desire when ye pray, to believe that you've received them and ye shall have them. He didn't say any way you bless me. 
Lord, just close your eyes and throw something out. Now that'll, that'll be good for me. But that's the way we see God. Are y'all with me? Okay. Where am I at? Prayer consecration. Lift your hand because I can get a mic there. Vanessa. Uh, Luke twenty two forty one. It says, saying, person. Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel appeared to him, Jesus, from heaven, strengthening him. That's Luke 40, 41 and 42. I'm 22, 41 through 42. That's the prayer of consecration. This is, this is Lord, Lord, I consecrate myself. This is what he's saying. I give you me. I give you me. I don't necessarily want to do this, but you know what? It's not about me. I give you me. Right? The other prayer we're talking about is the prayer of praise and worship. Luke 18 and 43. John 11, 41, Philippians 4 and 6. Raise your hands if you got it. You got it, Elder. Luke 18 and 43. And immediately he received his sight and followed him, glorifying God. And all the people, when they saw it, gave praise unto God. Now, prayer of the prayer of praise and worship is not a prayer of petition. It's not a prayer of faith, right? It's not a prayer of consecration. It's really a prayer that glorifies God. And when he received his sight, he glorified God. Somebody else give me the other one. John eleven forty one. Then they took away the stones from the place where the dead man was laid, the lion. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. Ooh. Oh, ain't nobody running. Oh, come on. That's the five, six, seven, eight scripture. They rolled away the stone. Who's in the grave? Lazarus, right? That is John 11, right? Lazarus is John 11. Can y'all help me? Yes. They rolled away the stone. Where's Lazarus? In the grave. And guess what they say? There's about 52 steps to go down there to get him. He was dead four days, stinking, because they didn't embalm him. He's down 52 steps, laying on a slab. And they rolled away the stone. And Jesus doesn't say... In the name of me. He opens his mouth and says, Father, I thank you that you already heard me. Can somebody worship him tonight? Oh, you're not, you're not getting it. Let me help you with this. Lazarus is dead. He's in the sepulcher. He's in the grave. 52 steps down there, wrapped in, in, in a winding shield. He, he's in grave clothes. He's stinking. He's graveyard dead. They move the stone. And Jesus says, thank you for hearing me. He says, thank you for hearing me. What does that mean? That my situation is 52 steps down there, laying dead. My promise, my dream, my hope, my ambition, my life is down there. And somebody rolled away the stone. And instead of me telling you it's there, I'm thanking you for hearing me. Because you've already done the work before I ask. Okay, I'm sorry, but I just really thought this one was somebody should have just jumped out of one of these windows. Ah! Boom! <laughs> like, sorry, we didn't tell you it was triple plated. <laughs> Do y'all... Father, I thank you. Maybe you need to pray. If you're in a situation right now that just looks like it's dead or dying, maybe you need to just say, Father, I thank you that you've heard me. Oh, God. Woo! Hallelujah. A prayer of praise and worship is about saying to God, I thank you that you heard me. I thank you that you see me. I thank you that you know what I'm going through. I thank you that you've already made a provision before I even see it. Thank you for bringing me out. Daph, you got the other one? Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication 
with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Be careful for what? Look at somebody say, I don't trust that. Let's pray for it. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let, you get what I'm saying? Be careful for nothing. Because the enemy has a way of bringing you the stuff you conjured up in your soul. And prayer is the only thing that can discern whether this is of God or of the devil. Prayer is the only thing that's going to keep you from walking in error. But if you go through, remember we talked about the soul, the what? The intellect, the will, and the emotions. What I think, what I feel, and what I'm going to do. Right? And you make decisions based on that without going to God in prayer. Because in prayer, God will show you the real thing from the phony thing. God will show you the path that you need to take. It's prayer. Come on here. Be careful for what? But in what? In all things or everything, do what? With prayer and what? Supplication. Now, we're going to get into supplication later. But with prayer and supplication, it's laying there before God. It is literally surrendering your will that says, God, as bad as I want it, if this is not for me, then I submit to your will. I supplicate. I will back up. I will die in this thing before I move forward. But by everything, with prayer and supplication, with what? Okay, here we go. That's the praise and worship prayer. With what? Thanksgiving. That's the, oh Lord, thank you that you heard me. Yeah. Hallelujah. Let your what? Request, Request be made known. Y'all see God. how we pray now? Oh, thank you, Lord. Okay, I got to keep moving. Um, Y'all stick with me. Don't leave me. Um, five. Uh, prayer binding and loosing. Go ahead, Roger. Truly, truly I say unto you, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Are we letting the word speak for itself? Now watch this. Binding and loosing. Now y'all know I I play. (laughs) But I grew up hearing, loose here. (laughs) And I heard that before. I even knew what that was. But it was always somebody in my house, particularly my Aunt Della, who was the real deep one, that every time she walked in the door and she see us, loose here. And then she got, we had this, we had this game that we, that she played with me. She said, come on out, Satan. I said, I ain't coming out. And that would tickle her, and we would just laugh. But, they, but, but in church, they got into a spirit of binding the devil. Binding lying spirits. Buying wicked spirits, nasty spirits, gluttonous spirits. Everything get, got bound in the church. A- am I telling the truth? I bind that worldly spirit in you. You got a spirit on you. And then watch it, and they could see it too. No, I'm telling you, they, they were in the presence of God. They could see when your whole demeanor changed. What's wrong with you? Something done happened. You, you, ain't, you ain't been praying. And they'll call you out. And don't let you get a girlfriend or a boyfriend. And they know it. I bind that fornicating demon in you. You ain't even you ain't even held hands, but they were already there. I bind that spirit. Come out here, Satan. Anybody remember that? Or am I just I'm not making this stuff up. And watch this, because we've stopped binding stuff, we have opened a door to watch this live with everything. And so that's why the church has been infiltrated by spirits. I said, and in the morning prayer or the noonday prayer, one of them, I said, part of our prayer time, and let me say this to you, when you pray, start sanctifying the atmosphere. Stop all of that hooping and hollering and trying to get in your key and hooping and exciting people emotionally to pray. I'm telling you, when you touch heaven, then people will be moved in their spirit. 
and you don't, and if hooping is what you do, then great. But make sure it's anointed of the Lord. It's not manufactured by you. But when you pray, when you talk to God, hallelujah. But we need to sanctify the atmosphere. Come on, let's practice it right now. Father, we just sanctify this atmosphere. We bind everything in this place that is not like you. Every weird spirit, every evil spirit, every demonic influence, spirit of infirmity, we come against you in the name of Jesus. We sanctify, hallelujah, the atmosphere in this house. And we pray the Holy Ghost of God, spirit of conviction, spirit of healing, manifest yourself tonight in the name of Jesus. Bind the devil in the mind, bind the devil in the will, bind the devil in our understanding. We thank you now. And then, Lord, release the revelation of your word. Come on, release the revelation of your word. Let the glory of your wonder be revealed in us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sanctify us today. Make us every bit holy. Hallelujah. We take authority over every negative spirit, over every negative word, over a negative curse. And we release the blessing of the word of God. We release your word. Your word that favors us. Your word that loves us. Your word that provides for us. We release your word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Over our children, we bind the spirit of this culture, of this generation. We take authority over it. And we command, hallelujah, we command this culture to loose our children and let them go. Let them go, hallelujah, from drugs and alcohol, alternative lifestyles, deviancy. Let it go. You will not have my child. Come on, open your mouth. You won't have my son. You will not have my daughter. I not only pray to God, but I speak to this situation. Satan, the Lord, rebuke you. The blood of Jesus against you. The blood of Jesus against you. The blood of Jesus against you. Every demonic spirit, we come against you. We war tonight in the Holy Ghost. We drive you out in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of affliction, the Lord rebuke you. The Lord rebuke you. The Lord rebuke you. The Lord rebuke you. Hypertension, the Lord rebuke you. Seizures, the Lord rebuke you. I ca shunned it in Rosha. I bind the spirit of the enemy. Every infirmity of the flesh. Oh God, we believe you. Sanctify the atmosphere. Come on, sanctify it. In the name of Jesus. Let every drunk that come through these doors be sober. Let every sinner be saved. Let every unfilled person be filled with the Holy Ghost. God, we call after you. Oh, we're your people. We're called by your name. Heal us, we pray. Deliver us, we pray. Set us free in our mind and in our will. Heal us where we're broken. Strengthen us where we're torn down. Build us up where we're weak. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And then convict every heart. Come on, y'all. Let's sanctify it. Convict every heart. Make this a place of conviction. Convict every heart. Everything that's not like you. Lord, convict it. Show us ourselves. Bind the devil and we repent. We repent, Lord. We say we're sorry. Come on, open your mouth. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us, we pray. Forgive us, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We believe you now. We believe you now. Let preaching go forth. Come on, come on. Let preaching go forth. Hallelujah. Release your gifts in the church. Come on, y'all. Release your gifts, Lord. Hallelujah. The gift of laying of hands. Come on. The gift of discernment. Loose your gifts in the church. That the people of God may be delivered. We pray in the name of Jesus. Fill us again. Fill us again. Fill us again. Shower us with the Holy Ghost. Revive our mind and our will in the name of Jesus. And we thank you now. And we thank you now. And we thank you now. Thank you that you heard us. Come on. Thank you that you heard us. 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 Heal in this place. Oh, shut up. Mm. Thank you, Lord. You may be seated. Hallelujah. 
binding and loosing. You got to bind something. You got to bind the enemy in your mind. You got to say to yourself, then hold on, that ain't God. That's not, that's not, that's not the way God thinks. Self, the Lord rebuke you. Well, I'm the only one to have to rebuke the devil out of me. Self, the Lord rebuke you out of your mind. Why are you feeling that way? Oh, hey, this ain't of God. Loose here. Loose here. Y'all ain't gonna like this. But in your family, you need to just, be, you need to go back to binding and loosing. Telling that child, that's a lying spirit and I bind it in the name of Jesus. That's a manipulative spirit and I bind it in the name of Jesus. And the Holy Ghost will expose their heart and convict them. See, either you're going to believe God or you're not going to believe God. You got to speak to things on your job. Confusion and politics and mess. I bind this in the name of Jesus. Walk in saying, nope, I bind the devil today. Nope, not here. I decree that this day will be blessed. I decree I'm going to sh- laugh today. Hallelujah. Now you can be as mad as you want to be, but I'm going to laugh today because I'm not going to be drawn into somebody else's stuff. And then I lose favor. Can, can I help you with something? Now, y'all going to think I'm crazy, but I don't care. Um, when I'm driving and I'm in the parking lot to stand, I, I, I pray when I turn in, Lord, give me a, give me a good space. Come on. And I just, I just pray over parking spaces. Go ahead and laugh at me, but let me tell you what I'm doing. I'm training my spirit how to focus on a thing. And if I don't get it, I don't be saying, oh, God didn't hear me. No, he wants me to walk. Dude, you see how big you are? You need to take a few steps. You, you all keep laughing, but guess what I keep working on? The other thing is raising the dead. I was tell, when wasn't I talking to some preachers and I said, you know, I just believe God for that. And then reading that book by Smith Wigglesworth, I mean, the person who wrote the book on Smith, I'm thinking, yes, Lord, I'm not crazy. For him to go up there and grab that man, take him out of bed and throw him up against the wall and say, live. In the name of three times he did it. And the man fell down three times. But on that third time, he woke up. See, here's my thing. Don't worry about people who criticize. Let me help you with something. I was driving yesterday and I saw somebody with an old Rolls Royce. And I said, wow, that's nice. And then Mila said, it's old. And then immediately I said, but you ain't even got an old one. Y'all hear? If you don't even have an old one, if you don't have an old one of what you're criticizing, you ain't even got one. So how in the world are you opening your mouth against something that you don't even own? Binding and loosing. I'm believing God. I'm believing God. I'm going to tell you something that, that, that just bothered me. And um, I just said, Lord, I, I got to work on it. Um, our, our mother Pearl is having, uh, Mom, can I just talk about it for a second? She's having some pain in her eyes. And I saw her yesterday, I mean Sunday, in the office. And there was an unction to pray for her. And I said, no, I said, I said it. I didn't say it. I said, I wish I had the power to lay hands in your eyes immediately. And then I went down into the, the preacher's classroom and I'm reading the thing about the model prayer and I'm thinking, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with us? That's the way the church should be working. You got a migraine? I lay my hands on you. And they shall lay hands on the what? And they what? So if the the issue is the Bible is not broken, there's something wrong. Because we are so full of junk. We got everything else going on inside of us but the free flow of the Holy Spirit. It's an indictment. When I saw her tonight, I said, how are you? She said, I'm just in pain. And that broke my heart. I'm like, Lord... Now, I've been praying. Don't, don't, don't think I have not been praying. 
And then don't, don't give me the, well, it ain't the will of the Lord and people got to go through. Stop all that. The issue is, are we where we need to be? Let God do his work. But where are we? It's an indictment when people stay home or people go to the ER and they don't come to the church. When the church was the hospital. It still is. Thank you. Thank you, Roger. It still is. But guess what? We need some new attendees. We need some new practitioners. You can't come up here and pray for people in the intercessory line on Sundays and we go through. No, you've got to get them right. What do you want from God? And I'm telling you now, I'm, don't play with me because uh, I feel Chucky coming out. I'm telling you. I'm going to just simply say, if you don't know, then sit right here or go sit down. And when, once you get it, I'm not going to be mean. Don't be mean to people. But the thing is, I can't effectively pray for you if you don't know what you want. So I'm making it up for you, and then I want for you what you have not asked God for yourself. Is this good, teaching? Let's move on. Where was we at? Binding and loosen. Sorry. Oh, man, I gotta, I'm going to have to probably pick this up next week. Uh, prayer of intercession. That's where we're at now. Ephesians 1, 15 through 18. Somebody's got it? Yes, ma'am. What happened to y'all? I went to pray. Y'all put, hold on, don't stop. Thank you, sir. Let me just tell my, my mic helpers, listen to me. Stick with what y'all were doing until we're done. Don't think you know what I'm going to do because you probably don't. It's a good thing. I, I did Bishop McCoy the same way. I go put it. He said, who told you to go put it up? I bind that 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 distractive spirit in you. <laughs> Amen. I ain't playing. In Justin, I bind that spirit of ADD. <laughs> I'm not playing. Y'all, you think, you think I'm playing and I'm telling you, see, that's the problem. I'm telling you I love him as a son, but he is easily distracted. And he will tell you that pastor called you out. No, he didn't. And if y'all do this after church, wow, why did pastor do that? I love him. And, and that's the way my pastor did me. He, he called the stuff out that was just not right. You're like, you, you got some problems. So <laughs> like, yeah, Bishop, but you ain't have to tell everybody. <laughs> but I'm telling you, you see how we go? And we let stuff go in people. And it's not good for them. And we laugh at it. And we make them comfortable in their mess. And then the minute you call it out, then something's wrong with you. So I'm just telling y'all, watch it for January, because I'm going to just start calling it. Go ahead. Wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. This is the prayer of intercession. He's praying for someone. He's praying for the church at Ephesus, right? He said, this is my prayer for you. Philippians 1, 3, and 4. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you for always in every prayer of mine for you all making request with joy. So the prayer of intercession, and this is where we're at at Acts, and I wanna, I'm going to break through Acts. I'm not going to be able to break up into the six prayer groups tonight because I'm going to run out of time, and we'll do that. But let me just tell you how we're going to do this. We're going to teach on prayer. We're going to talk about these types. And then where you see these signs, you'll go to one, two, three rows of them, and then you will pray in groups, and we're going to be talking about those things. So people in the group will raise up an issue that's going on voluntarily. Don't give us all your business, but just raise it up. And then that group is going to pray that specific prayer. 
so that we can get proficient at praying specific prayers. Not all of that, oh Lord, you know. We know he know. So stop telling him he knows. And, and it sounds humorous, but I'm so serious tonight. Because, because our problem is, is that we're not praying effectively so that God is moving in, in the midst of us. And we're going to stop being emotional. Another thing that I'm going to tell you in the prayer groups, there's no speaking in tongues. Wait a minute, you can't tell the Holy Ghost. I know. Let me tell you something. This is not about me telling the Holy Ghost. This is me telling you. Paul says that I will pray with the Spirit and with an understanding. So, and he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God, and edifieth his own spirit. So a lot of speaking in tongues that we do is for our own worship. It's our own stuff. They're saying this, no, because if you're going to speak in a message, then he says, hold it if you can't interpret it. And if there's not an interpreter available, then you need to hold that tongue. We've gotten really just messed up in the church trying to appear deep when we don't know the Bible. And nowhere, and since we were doing this with Jesus, nowhere do you see Jesus speaking in tongues. Is it recorded? He spake in his native tongue, right? But he wasn't going off in the spirit. I'm, I'm not I'm telling you. There's an appropriate time for that. So please don't say the pastor's saying we can't. No, I'm not telling you that. I'm saying while we're practicing the prayer of praise and worship and binding and loosing, and you're praying for people, you got to be praying for their specific thing. You go off in a tongue and you've left them. That was Paul's problem. His, that was his rebuke to the church at Corinth. He says, I walk in and everybody's got a tongue. Everybody got a song. Everybody got a hymn. It's confusion. So the prayer of intercession, say with me, between the bullet and the body. If you're going to intercede for somebody, it's between the bullet and the body. Elder Humphreys, do me a favor. Stand up here. You'll be the perpetrator with the gun. Justin, he going to shoot you. Right? I'm just giving you this example, a visual example of intercession. Intercession stands here. So when you tell someone, now listen, the reason why I'm doing this, because I want you to stop talking this church talk and giving people false hope, and then you go home or you go to the drive through at Popeye's and you order, you know, an eight piece, and then you fall asleep. But you told them when you left church, I'm praying for you. I'm going to intercede on your behalf just so you can appear deep. You ain't deep. You're dumb. Because you don't know the word. You don't tell somebody you're praying for them because you don't know what they're going through. You're sitting there saying, I'm praying for you. And they're hurting. You don't know whether they're going to make a decision where the enemy has gotten to their mind for them to take their life. And you told them you was praying for them. So if you're going to intercede, then you've got to stand between the bullet and the body. And you've got to pray to God on this behalf while you're taking the bullet. That's what Jesus did. Because God had us at right. The only thing we deserved was death. And Jesus stood between the bullet and the body. He who did no sin became sin for us. Hallelujah. We're here? This is intercession. Thank you. Have a seat. i got to let you go in a minute. Just let me get through this. Intercession is the act of going to God on another's behalf and pleading their case before God. It is intentionally praying for others and standing in the gap until the cause and effect of prayer have been favorably concluded. Intercession is not only prayer, but actionable work that preserves the life of another. Notice in this text, when I intercede for you, it's not just praying for you. It's actually doing some stuff. It's actually going that I have influence with a person. So I go to them on your behalf. You get that? That's intercession. It's actionable work. Uh, um, Barnabas introduced Saul Paul to the apostles early in his conversion and later brought him to Antioch to shape one of the most powerful ministries in the New Testament era. Turn over the page. 
So the backstory, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to run through this real quick. Saul, Paul is converted at the beginning of Acts chapter 9. The disciples saved Saul's life. You see where this is intercession? Because they, the Jews were going to kill him. Because they was like, ain't no way you saved. You've been killing us, binding us. Now all of a sudden you got this holy conversion? Okay, we're going to kill you. And the disciples went and got Paul and lowered him over a wall in a basket to get him to get him out of there. That's intercession. That's actionable work. Do y'all see it? Barnabas intercedes by bringing Saul Paul to the apostles. Verse 27. Paul intercedes for... I can't pronounce that name. Do y'all know this name? Okay, him. Who was bedridden for eight years. Verse 33 and 34. Then he intercedes for Dorcas at Joppa and raises her from the dead. Verse 40. I want you to see in this whole chapter, it's a whole bunch of intercession. It's actionable work. It's prayer. Right? So examples of intercession. Uh, Abraham intercedes for Sodom. Y'all know that? He says, Lord, if you find 50, then he say, hey, what about 40? Hey, what about 30? 30, 30, 30, 30 can I get 20? You know, he, he started bargaining, right? He was interceding. Notice, if you read the text, he says, Lord, permit me to speak one more time and I'll shut up. Had Abraham not said that, God would have still been in that intercessory conversation. But he says, if I can find 10, he says, hey, what, what, what was the final number? One. <laughs> Jeremiah intercedes for Israel during Babylonian captivity. Ezekiel intercedes for Israel in exile. And that's when that whole vision about Ezekiel of the bones. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. And what did God say to him? He said, speak to the wind. He said, prophesy. Prophesy to the wind. And so this is where I'm trying to tell you, it gets back to Acts um, 9 and 40, that when you pray to God, then you got to speak to things. Come on, one more time. Say, I'm going to pray to God, but I'm going to speak to some things. Speak to that job application. Speak to that promotion. Speak. Speak to your body and tell it to line up with the word of God. you got to speak to things. We pray to God, but you got to speak to stuff. Why? Because the power of prayer gives you cause and effect to change your outcome. So Moses intercedes for Israel in the wilderness. Remember when God says, I'm done with him? He said, matter of fact, I'm going to wipe them all out and I'm going to start over with you. Moses is like, hey, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> I know they get on your nerves, but if you kill them all, then the enemy is going to say that you couldn't bring them to the promise. So Lord, just forgive them. He said, all right. He interceded. You all got it? Parents must intercede for children. Not holler at them. Yeah, holler at them. Beat their brains out if you need to. But you got to go to God for them. Because you know what? After you get finished tearing the hide off their skin, if their heart doesn't change, nothing is going to change. The best thing you can do for your kids is go to God for them. And then tell them, I'm praying for you. You, you're not, I'm, I, don't, I don't like you drunk. I don't like you uh, dating this one this week and this one the next week. I don't like you lazy. I don't like you jobless. I'm praying for you. God is going to affect your dreams because you are not good. This is not my promise. You got to speak to things. Spouses must intercede for their marriages. There are so many husbands and wives who do not pray together. What? You got to pray. You, husband, the Bible says you got to love your wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. It is your job to make sure that you cover your wife in prayer. Wife, it is your responsibility for your husband to be, to be the most advocate voice in heaven's court on his behalf. And when husbands and wives are not praying, then you allow the enemy to manipulate emotions, mind, and everything else. Work through the kids, work through everything. You've got to pray. And you cannot just say, Lord, bless my wife. No, you've got to stand between the bullet and the body. Yeah. Yeah, ain't, ain't no amens. That's all right, y'all. I'm tired. Believers intercede for governments, authorities, communities. And I love what Bishop Mason said. Bishop Mason said, we pray for mankind everywhere. Everywhere. He, he just kept talking about praying for, the, for man everywhere. Mankind everywhere. 
Intercession, and I'm going to let you go with this. Intercession is specific to a need. Are y'all going to understand this? It's specific to a need. So what was the need? God said he was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. That was, that was real. So Abraham went to intercede, right? Um, so I gave you some of the, the, the pieces. Moses intercedes, but they were specific. They're specific to a situation or a circumstance requiring what? Divine intervention and faith application. Divine intervention. So um, this morning, we were praying on the prayer call for um, this woman because a pastor, let me just tell you, a pastor has brought his church on the prayer call. They've already ordered, they've downloaded the faith focuses, and they're using our prayer call as their consecration for the month. So at 6.15 this morning, I get this text with this laundry list of prayer requests from his church. And I made sure, since I knew his church was on the line, that I called them names out. So there is some, and I forgot her name, but she has a son who has a tumor. And so we we prayed about that this morning. So my specific prayer is that that tumor dissolves. Come on, come on, let's pray into it. Lord, dissolve the tumor. Come on, Lord, dissolve the tumor. Lord, dissolve the tumor. Lord, dissolve the tumor. You're able to do it. So we speak to the tumor. Ah, and we say, be gone. In the name of Jesus, be gone. Ah, shalaba. Hey, God, in the name of Jesus, be gone. When you pray in faith, He gives you the ability to speak to a condition. And you don't have to be there all night speaking to it. And so watch this. divine. So that's divine intervention. Because that's not something that we can do ourselves. It is the power of prayer demonstrated in cause and effect. Intercession is measurable and isn't always miraculous. It's not always going to be a miracle. But it will always be measurable. Do you all understand that? Okay. And then... We, in, we can intercede for others' behaviors, desires, future, emotions, demonic influence, warfare, sickness, and culture. And so then, at this point, we're, we're supposed to break up into these groups. We'll do that at our next uh, session together. But has this been helpful for you? So now, we just can't come to learn about prayer. Now we've got to pray what we've learned. Y'all got it? We've got to pray what we've learned. All right. I'm going to ask the ushers to help us tonight um, to, and then I'm going to ask some of the brothers to help the ushers. And I don't know whether we have them on. Oh, y'all, y'all good? I'm, I'll send you some help. Y'all good? Oh, they're here. They're ready. They're like, Pastor, we got this. All right. Y'all go ahead. Um, offering envelopes. If we missed you Sunday, we definitely, definitely don't want to miss you today. I want to share with you that if you will be consistent in this 90-day challenge, if you will be consistent in giving, in tithing, in praying, God will bless you. He will bless you abundantly. Amen. Got a powerful testimony about what God did for a person. Just Sunday. God moved and he and he he did it financially because they sowed a gift, they sowed a tithe, and God reduced a bill by a significant amount. This is what God does. And he does it immediately. He does it immediately. No, he does it immediately. God ain't playing, y'all. And he's calling us to take him at his word. So tonight, if you can give a $10 gift, we would be so appreciative. If you don't have that, give the best that you have. To you that are watching us by Ustream, we're delighted that you've joined us for this special edition of WOW. And it's our first session of our prayer clinic. We want you to go on our website uh, www.greatercommunitykojic.org and then hit the donate button and tuck a gift uh, there and send it to this ministry so that we can continue to feed you to those that are watching us and, and you may not have a church home and uh, you could be anywhere in the world but you may not have a church home would you allow us by the medium of this particular mode to share the gospel of Jesus Christ and just become a cyber member of Greater Community You can simply do that by, again, going on our website, 
And if you will support this ministry and you ask for the product and aids that we have, our faith focus, our challenges, whatever we have, we'll send that to you electronically until you can connect to a local assembly. I want to win the world for Jesus Christ. And if you're watching us, I believe that God is speaking powerfully to you. And so we thank God for you. Good night, and we'll see you on our next telecast. Come on, let's give them a great God bless you.